everyone, my name is B. First of all, I want to say thank you to the organizers of our Networks Conference for curating on such a relevant topic on networks and allowing me to talk about my project. In this short video, I'm going to talk about my project, Channel Channel. There are two zines that are to accompany the project, accessible in the zine library and online on the project website. To start the project, I'll talk a bit on the over overview. I live both in Rotterdam and Beijing. While traveling between places, VPN was a frequent tool to access information. After years of subscribing to VPN service, I installed my DIY VPN. In this process, I started Channel Channel as an attempt to unravel the perplexities of using a VPN to inquire about both its technical dimension and adapt a more humanistic reading of technology. When connected, the VPN routes my network traffic in Beijing to Rotterdam. To speak about network traffic is a bit abstract. I will talk a bit more about the background of where I live in Beijing, about where the abstract network traffic situates in more tangible everyday reality. I live in Liqiao, Beijing, northeast of the Six Ring Road, east to the Beijing Capital Airport. The town of Liqiao presents a more textured reality than the more organized airport area. To give an average representation of what may Liqiao look like on the web, these are photos that um, I uh, looked up uh, after entering photos of Liqiao. It's a town of vast parks, restaurants and farms, village hotels, and vacant lands that are waiting to be rent out. Just recently, road lamps had been installed on the road outside my compound, so it's district of constant construction undergoing. Businesses are mostly limited to factories and farms, that's why a picture featured a ceremony of a sweet melon picking festival. My compound is formerly a factory that produced irrigation equipment. As the factory is outsourcing its production out of Beijing, they modify the factory space and rent them out as studios. I live in one of the roofed rectangles. My pie installation is in Rotterdam South, on Kadendrecht, where it used to be a red light district and Chinatown. I installed my pie inside a cupboard where my router is located. Proximate to my router are facilities such as my household electric meter and gas meter. The installation is straightforward. I followed video instructions and documentation of Pi VPN. Once the installation is, is successful, the traffic can be routed. This is a picture of browsing YouTube in Beijing after installation. The project is both practical and speculative. It's practical in the sense that it involved practical doings such as setting up the Pi and opening ports of the router. It's a practical attempt to obtain self-sufficiency and efficiency on possible layers that I can technically interfere with with the in infrastructure. This is an interest there is an interesting dimension of efficiency of routing a network between Rotterdam and Beijing because of the time difference because Beijing's time zone is ahead of Rotterdam for six hours, and user can take advantage of idle hours. For example, Beijing side using the network to watch the news early in the morning, when in Rotterdam it's after midnight. It's an efficiency on top of self-sufficiency. It's speculative in the sense that I want to ask questions such as, can network traffic be shared and exchanged between a group of people? Can people contribute spare network bandwidth to people restricted in firewalls? A constant concern is network security and privacy. In a network of exchanging users, this concern is mapped with another layer of social dynamics, such as mental proximity, familiarity, and reali reliability of the users. These factors become evident when sharing. In this way, network, networking become a process with more variance and dependencies. 
as the feminist server manifesto acknowledges, networking is a situated and pro promiscuous process. An example of the social dynamics of exchange is that a user might feel hesitant to use a shared network due to concerns of receiving free help or imposing inconveniences to the contributor on the other side. But perhaps the roles within the network doesn't need to be defined as binary users or contributors. Offering and receiving imply positions with difference, some kind of difference in altitude, a sense of inequality, and standing on unfair grounds. The more I speculate based on this prototype of relationship of the giver and taker, the more I felt it implied hierarchical priority and entitlement of access. Especially in the context of post-truth and fake news era of today, I felt the interpretation of internet censorship and overcoming internet censorship became more nuanced. If there are no available interpretive tools to become resistant to manipulated news, wouldn't censorship be a straightforward, clear-cut way to ensure truthfulness? I still don't have a generalized answer to this question, and there's many, many more answer, uh, many, many more questions that derived from this project. However, Channel Channel as a project presented a way of interpreting technology that's more contextualized and situated. Along with Channel Channel, I launched another project that's called Contextual Electronics that was inspired, was inspired by reading a book called On Domestic Electrical Objects, uh, which, is an es which, an, which is an anthology of essays musing about electronics in the domestic space. And together with the spatial politics, social dynamics that are often unregarded when talking about electronics. In my living compound in Beijing, I produced the first two zines under the project. I photographed electronics in my domestic space, for example, how electronics with similar functions stay in proximity with each other. I photographed my fridge, which on its surface area, a poster of English learning occupies a daily presence, adding a custom layer to the fridge's factory appearance. Since my compound was renovated quite recently, traces of construction was still visible. The, this spread is dedicated for switches and their traces. Pencil marks on the wall were left by the contractor as installation reminders. The box of a switch has an open peephole from which the connection wires were visible. I also documented visible traces of network infrastructure. On the exterior of the building, I noticed a sign specifying it's from an optical fiber distribution box. And on the name tag, it was appended with the compound's name. Through holes in the wall, the fiber cable was distributed to independent households in the building and allowed telecommunication to happen. Because the compound was situated in a former factory space, it came with, small, with, small, with a small piece of orchard area. Solar-powered LED lights in the pomegranate tree was put in the pomegranate trees as decoration in the night. I photographed the fallen fruits on the ground and collaged them with found images online. Another publication is not your typical household router, which is to take the router for a tour in the metaf metaphorical sense. Usually, the router routes network traffic for other devices, but it doesn't get to enjoy mobility for itself. The content of the zine takes form of a storybook that documented various places in the compound that the router travels to. Please take a look at the zine at the zine library or browse online at the project website. These are the short, uh, these are the short introductions to my project. Please feel free to navigate on the website for more details. Thank you.